Hello and welcome to today's daily devotion following our Easter Victory Sermon Series. You're in week one, day six, where each day we look at a different theme verse and see what it has to say about our various themes. We end this week looking at another one of Jesus' disciples. It is actually the disciple John. Now we've already looked at what he had to say about joy straight from the words of Jesus recorded in his gospel, but this time we're going to look at one of his epistles. We're going to look at the uh, first of them, First John. Now, what's interesting about this epistle, it was written probably right before, right after, about 100 AD. So what that means is this comes a significant time after John had written his gospel, or at least experienced the events of the gospel. It's also taken place now after the church has gone under persecution for many, many years. And so that gives us an interesting context to see what, what John has to say about joy at this point in his life. Now, if you expect John to be disheartened or grumpy, you're in for kind of a surprise. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. If you're familiar with John's gospel, then you may be experiencing a little deja vu. He starts in a similar manner here in the epistle. He starts at the beginning, claiming that this word of life has been from the beginning. But even more than that, that this word of life he actually experienced. He heard it, he interacted with it, he actually physically touched it. And so what John is going to say to us about joy is intimately connected to this belief, this truth, that John actually experienced the incarnate God on this planet. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify to it and proclaim it to you, the eternal life which was from the Father and was made manifest to us. And this word of life, John says, is the same life that was with the Father from the beginning of time. But God in his mercy has made it known or revealed or shown it to us in John's words. In fact, beyond that, John says that he is willing to to testify, to bear witness. In fact, the Greek word here is the same one we get martyr from, meaning to willing to die for in terms of being a witness. But even beyond that, John believes it is his job to be a messenger, to be a proclaimer of this truth that he experienced. That which we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with his Son, Jesus Christ. So John here says that his testimony, and by extension, I think the testimony of Scripture, is for the purpose of us seeing this crucified and risen Christ, and that we would recognize in Jesus that fellowship with the Father has been restored because of the Son. Everything that has been broken since the Garden of Eden is being restored and renewed because of Jesus Christ. And John would have us be absolutely certain of this. And we are writing these things so that our joy may be complete. So the Greek word for joy here is kara. You didn't think we'd be going through the whole week without a little Greek vocabulary, did you? So for John, joy, kara, is more than a feeling. It is a response to Jesus that leads us to experience the fulfillment of all things. And that experience for John was joy. So in other words, John thinks that all of Scripture has been written down for Christians to experience true and full joy. Now that, of course, is in spite of the things we experience in this world. And that's a powerful thing coming from John, considering what he's experiencing at this moment. Besides being banished to the island of Patmos, besides seeing the great persecution of the church, he's probably the last of the twelve original 12 disciples who's still living. And yet he can still talk about being filled with joy. And in fact, going beyond that, he says that his joy is actually made full when he's able to share that joy with other people. He creates this cool kind of like bookend around Christian joy. And that's a pretty powerful image coming from a mere fisherman. So John would remind us and encourage us that all of God's word has been written to assure us that the incarnate God who died also rose again so that we might be filled with joy. I pray the truth of the resurrection would make your joy full. Hallelujah. He is risen.